Greetings, loved ones. Um, while I've been advised to not speak on the specifics of what took place on February 25th, I do need to address um, what's going on on a larger scale because the same issues we're dealing with in Africatown right now is pretty much taking place throughout black communities um, in the city, state, across the country. This past week, we heard um, Mark Ridley Thomas has plans to tear up the streets in Africa town, which will hurt um, the street vending as it will um, stop them from having space to set up, but it will also hurt a lot of the merchants over there. And then a couple of days ago, we got information that the Rouse on Crenshaw and Slauson is going to shut down in May. And again, that is the largest employer of black people in our community right now a couple years ago a lot of you saw where we were in that same plaza the crenshaw plaza dealing with a lot of businesses over there because even though it is in a predominantly black community a number of the businesses are no longer hiring black folks so you know we um held about a month long um uh, grand closing against a lot of the businesses and a few of them did respond by hiring blacks and if you go over there now you'll see viva bargain still has some black people there the popeye's chicken still has the brother they hired um burger king but a number of the businesses have gone back to having no black employees so again uh, where you know the community will lose access to much needed produce and groceries there. Um, the bigger issue is the economics. It will take away a lot of um, income for a lot of families in that community and very likely force a lot of them out because you have entry level to upper management positions at that route. So um, all of this pretty much plays into everything that's been happening. Um, you know, the, the gentrification at the top, you have white um, developers, entities that have decided they want to once again come and take away black space. Um, same thing that played out in Africa, you know, hundreds of years ago and, and to black communities all around the globe, including here in America ever since. And what has happened in the past 30 years, um, or even going back about 50 years as we were warned by the Honorable Il Hodge, Malik Il Shabazz, Malcolm X, that because black consciousness got to the level that we see white supremacy for what it is, they began to put in place black misleadership that they control. And for the past 30 years here in LA, um, in response to the 92 rebellion, a number of Negro misleadership was put in place to basically um, help bring in policies. I was pointing out the other day how Mark Ridley Thomas and others helped to carry out Joe Biden's crime bill in our communities that resulted in a lot of, of black death, um, genocide in our communities, a lot of um, youth being locked up, rounded up, kidnapped, incarcerated. Today, we have more brothers and sisters on these prison plantations than we did in the past on slave plantations. In addition to that, they also help to um, allow banks to um, prey on, on black home ownership, black business ownership. They allowed um, the cost of living to go beyond the, the cost of um, living wages that black folks in our communities were earning. They allowed a situation, as I was just speaking on, to where in our communities, others have come and, and um, set up shop and they don't provide job opportunities for our brothers and sisters. And a lot of people always respond, well, you got to have your own business, that and the other. But right now, as a, a response to this COVID, we're being told 41% of black businesses are not going to come back. But even before COVID, a number of black businesses were being put out of business. And again, that's because of the whole banking situation. Um, a, a number of blacks are not afforded the same type of loans and grants and sources of funding as other businesses, but also the um, predatorial attacks through citations different, just like they're doing with the street vendors now. 
as they're unleashing the police and and um, health and safety and all these people on street vendors, we found as we boycotted a number of these Korean businesses, um, why those businesses were no longer black. You know, that transfer happened in the late 80s, early 90s. A lot of the black liquor stores, gas stations, everything we owned is not that black folks just couldn't manage their business, but they came under attack. And again, with a lot of the same black political misleadership that that's in office right now so um some folks have tried to draw that what's going on is personal between africa town and community build or myself and robert Sosedo or myself and mark ridley thomas but again when you um if you take time to actually investigate the information we're putting out it's factual anything that i've posted or shared that's not factual based i will take it down right now if anybody can show me otherwise. But again, when you look at this information and you see, um, again, what's happening in Africa Town is happening to all of our communities. Um, one of the things that they do is allow our areas to go blight. Basically, resources that are, are meant to help uh, revitalize, maintain, sustain, uphold, um, um, you know, build our communities are directed into a, a select few nonprofits that in turn do not distribute or do not meet the full capacity that they are, are receiving these funds for to build up our communities. And um, in Africa town, one such situation is with uh, what's known as the bid, the business improvement district contract, which is to um, help clean up the community. Again, Africa town um, managed to do, the cleanup in 2019 for free. You know, some business didn't want to even give up a dollar to help us, but we kept the, the area clean just like the brothers got out yesterday. And, and that came out of our personal expenses, you know, hiring the truck, paying brothers to get out there and help us. But yet when um, these select nonprofits get these multi-million dollar contracts, they fail to meet full capacity on it. Um, there was a situation where there was uh, funding to, to take care of the upkeep of, of plants and stuff in the community. Didn't happen. Um, situation when film productions come into the community. A number of merchants over there have complained that they do not receive their share of the funding. So again, um, a select few who are tied into these black political misleaders are making sure Others in the community do not get what they need to sustain and maintain in our communities. And then the whole situation where for the past decade, a number of us have been out in the streets pushing back against um, the, the genocide by cop. And everybody always says, oh, well, what about the black on black violence? What about the black on black crime? Well, you saw firsthand a few weeks ago how that plays out, um, a, a situation where some individuals who are financed by the mayor, by Garcetti um, to help reduce crime, actually, uh, excuse me, to reduce violence, actually carried out violence. And they did it on the orders of Robert Saucedo, who was tied into both um, Mark Ridley Thomas and Eric Garcetti. Uh, about a week afterwards, Robert Saucedo held a town hall with Eric Garcetti. You know, again, blatantly letting it be known, yes, they are connected. Yes, they are financing now this hostile attempt to take over our community. But one of the main things I've been doing in response to what happened is, again, trying to make sure people stay focused on the bigger picture. You know, black folks fall out and, and go to war with each other, take each other out. What happens? The same thing we've seen in the past. These white folks now come in and take control of the, the last thriving black community we have. The same thing we see in Africa when the U.S. government finances um, multiple host hostile sides to fight each other in those countries, create um, um, instability, run people out of those communities, help terrorize and, and, and take down the strongholds in those communities. That's basically what's been happening. And, and even before um, it got to the violence, the whole reason they were stating um, – for us to keep their names out of our mouths is because we were exposing how they are, are attempting to one, like I was saying, hold back resources, but two, manipulate people against each other. In addition to um, 
Robert Sacedo, Mark Ridley Thomas has a small circle of individuals such as Sharif Franklin, Johnny Rames, um, Terry Scott, these other individuals who have been selling these false hopes to merchants and, and agitating um, homeowners to go against the street vendors, to go against the, the homeless. But again, on the other side, they have been holding back the resources to help the street vendors get in compliance. They have been holding back the resources to house the homeless. So again, you have people who, one, created the problem. Two, they hold back the resources to help the, the victims of the problems they created. And now three, they are now leading the charges to further criminalize and, and displace people from these communities. So where well, a lot of these people hold these degrees and so-called prominent positions, what you are actually seeing is, is a, a dumbed down intelligence. And basically what I mean is History shows us when these individuals turn against their own, help to take out their own, help to run off their own, the white folks then come and dispose of them. Um, in Africa, what did they do? They first went in and they removed the warrior class. They, they kidnapped and enslaved the working class, but then they went back and they took possession of the land and resources from the so-called elitist ruling class. And that's all that's been planned. The same trick they keep playing again and again. So what you really seeing is a bunch of dumb Negroes who are once again falling for their own lusts, ambitions, and, and greed in the moment, um, thinking, you know, they're going to come up and, and, you know, make this great, you know, come up off the rest of us. But again, really, they're handing over our community. They're handing over people homes. They're helping lead in the charge of, of black death, black genocide. So this by no means is, is something that was this personal because now it's, it's become a lot more personal for myself and others involved. But um, it's something that is affecting us as a community on multiple levels. And fortunately, as always is the case, once the um, oppressive class starts to resort to violence, all they've done is, is waking up more people. They, they've inspired more people. They've motivated more people to get involved. And just like we've seen in the past, where the resistance starts off, you know, trying to vote their way out and then they get a little more aggressive with protests. But once the oppressive class resorts to violence, they then awaken the resistance that they have to meet it on a similar level. So um, in hopes that this will not lead to fratricide and, and a, a, a bloodbath in our streets. Um, we will continue in hopes of, of educating, reaching out to folks. We want it to be known that we are not against the merchants. Over half the merchants over there know um, the support we have given them, both from direct patronizing their shops to um, provide security for them, to, again, to cleaning up the community, to assisting on multiple levels. So now that um, more merchants are seeing just how dirty Ridley Thomas and Garcetti Robert Salcedo, all these individuals are we hoping they will join in us in formulating a means of pushing back. And like I'm telling a lot of these young folks who are now talking about protests and all that, yeah, that's needed too. You need to, um, those you can, to legally arm yourselves to prepare yourselves to exercise your Second Amendment. But right now, um, as you say, the, the main, as you saw, the main thing they were saying was for us to get their names out of our mouths. Not only must we all continue to call them out, we, we must now recall them out um, from the Ridley Thomases to the James Butts and Inglewoods to everywhere the, the black misleadership has gotten into power to um, usurp the black existence. We must now shift um, the same energy we, we use to remove Jackie Lacey, Earl Wesson, all these other Negro misleaders. We must now focus on the few that are left and get uh, uh, champions who will get in there and fight for our collective good. So all of that to say, yes, we're on the side of those who love our people. Um, those who push Africa Town fully understand that Lamert was a racist who didn't want us in that community. Crenshaw, they hunt down, they hunted down black people who bought their way to freedom. So to uphold those names, y'all, that's insane. And and. When you get to a certain level of consciousness, there's no way you can carry those people's names forward. But it's not just in the name. Again, you look at the practice. Those who are pushing forward the um, name, the agenda of Lamert, of the same ones today, who are hostilely attempting to push and take out their own people. And those of us who are, are 
upholding and pushing forward and claiming this space as our Africa town, we have done all we can for our people. We have been the ones in this community keeping safety, mainly by earning the respect of our brothers and sisters in the streets. So again, this is why we know if um, Garcetti, really Thomas Salcedo, choose to foolishly push forward with this agenda of violence, it's not going to play out well for them either. So again, just saying all that to say, you know, we love y'all. We hope y'all continue to get more involved, support the um, the Merck Park Village Vendors Association, continue to support the merchants over there in the community, continue to support our homeless brothers and sisters because they're dying out in the streets. While these fools is, is using all this homeless funds to further enrich themselves, to buy their second, third, fourth, fifth homes, our brothers and sisters are out there dying in these damn streets, y'all. And that's what this is about, to make sure we continue to have a black, a black presence in this city, county, state, on this damn planet. Black power.